Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over this weekend's UFC card, uh, which is taking place in Salt Lake City. Uh, we're going to be looking at it from a DFS perspective. For those of you who were following us last week, and we had an extremely strong week, uh, leading to a second place finish in the 555 for 20,000. Um, but overall, it was, it was a pretty, pretty straightforward bit of analysis that got us there. Um, even though it was a 15 fight card, we, there was a lot of kind of distractors on that card. What I mean by distractors, there were at least six or seven fights that really had nothing to do with the DFS slate, which people spent way too much time dealing with. Um, and we were able to fade pretty much all of them. None of them got there and we were able to hone in on the, the key underdogs and the key upside spots and we needed Tom Aspinall to basically win his last to win the main event for us to get second in that 555. And uh, he won in the first round, like everybody pretty much expected. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we're moving on and it's a 12 fight card, which means that uh, you don't have to be that greedy with your underdogs. Uh, you, yes, you have to uh, prioritize upside, but it's not as if, if you find a $7,200 fighter that you think is, uh, is underpriced somehow that it's you, you, you shouldn't play them because of a lack of upside in a slate like this, when you have a $7,200 fighter, for example, that rates to be a very, very strong play, even on win equity, um, you should probably play them uh, 12 fights. It's not 10. So it's not as straightforward, but um, it's not 15 either. So you don't have to be that fancy and that tricky. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you have to look at kind of the other the context of the slate as well. And the other thing that lends itself to not needing to be that fancy is that there's not, at least in my opinion, any real lock play that you have to get to. Like last week, Tom Aspinall just laid over the field so hard that you had to do pretty much whatever you could to play him. Even though he was going to be popular, He just his metrics were just so much better than everybody else on the slate that you just have, had to do whatever it took to get there. On this slate, it might not be the same. We're going to get to probably the closest thing to, uh, I want to say a lot, the closest thing to a high-priority spend-up uh, from this slate. Um, but I think you'll find that that this slate is a little less clear. Um, nonetheless, let's go through this and let's see if we can't make heads or tails of this. We'll start right from the bottom. Uh, Miranda Maverick versus Priscilla Cachuera. You have Maverick is 9,400, and she is priced rather efficiently as far as the money line goes. She's about minus 300, so 9,400 is fair enough. Sometimes you'll see fighters that are, say, minus 600 that are priced similarly. Um, so it's not you're getting it's not as if you're getting a bad price, not if you're getting a good price with respect to her win odds, but it's pretty efficient. The thing is, though, at 9,400, what you really need is to have an inside the distance line of minus 110 or better, plus a uh, significant takedown upside. And in the absence of significant takedown upside, you're going to want not only a minus 110 inside the distance, but you're also going to want a decent line on him finishing or her finishing in the first round. Um now, when you look at the internals here, you have Mavericks inside the distance line is extremely poor for her price. Uh, Maverick inside the distance looks like, um, why do I not see it? Maverick inside the distance plus 130. And, and that's that's really not very good for a, a $9,400 fighter. However, she does have a significant takedown upside. Um, she, she's a very accomplished wrestler and grappler and the style matchup here favors her quite a bit because Priscilla Cachuera, uh, her takedown defense is, uh, kind of notoriously poor. The only thing that's going against her, well, there are a couple of things going against her, but one of them is that she's taking this fight on short, short notice, Miranda Maverick, as well as the fact that this is being fought in Salt Lake City at high elevation. Um, those, those two, those two things that usually don't make for a good pairing when you have to take a fight at elevation, um, in, uh, on short notice, that's difficult. And not only that, but if you are now going to rely on grappling, which does take a lot out of you, um, it makes it extra difficult. So, uh, I could certainly make the case that Maverick is not exactly the greatest big favorite out there, but remember a DFS, 
you're not really supposed to be questioning the line. You're supposed to be just kind of uh, figuring out the derivative of that line. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to presume that she is going to win the fight about 75% of the time. So what is she going to look like in those wins? Um, I guess when you factor in the takedown upside, along with the um, uh, the takedown upside, along with the, the win odds, um, I think that she is probably a pretty a pretty decent ninety four hundred dollar fighter. Okay, um, so I, in, unless we get to someone who's significantly better, um, I think you have to consider her a, a, a decent play here. Now, on the other side, okay, on the other side of, of the of the equation, you have Priscilla Cachuera, and Priscilla Cachuera, um, she always seems to outfight her odds. Now I want to show you this. So let's look at Priscilla Cachuera. She is look at her record here, but she's won four of her last five fights. And every one of them she's been an underdog. She was like plus 190 here, plus 135 here, plus 205 here. Okay, against Shannon Dobson, she was she was minus minus 185. But I think that's relevant. You know, um, who's to say that that Maverick is is really a three to one favorite here? Now, now I know you're not supposed to, you know, to, to question the odds, but let's look at Miranda Maverick for a few minutes. I mean, she's a freaking big favorite every single fight. She's she lost at minus two ninety last week. Okay, okay, great. She she won a decision at minus eight forty. Then she won at minus three forty. Then she lost as the favorite. Then she lost as the favorite. You know what I mean? Like she's the favorite in every fight and she doesn't really outpace her odds, so to speak. So I don't know. I, I think, I think the Miranda side is kind of fishy. And if I, if you want a, another little bit of evidence or evidence, another take for why Miranda Maverick might not be such a great play. She got just ragdolled by, by Jasmine, uh, Jazz the vicious in her last fight. And now she wants to really get back in the cage really quickly. I don't know if she's necessarily going to be going for these takedowns. Okay. She just got into a grappling match with somebody and lost. I, I just have this weird feeling that even though that's like her seriously, her, her easy path to victory, I have this weird feeling she's going to try to strike more than she's supposed to here. So I don't know. I, I do think that Cachuera is a live underdog. And I know you're not supposed to put your opinions uh, above the, the, the win odds for the purposes of, DFS analysis, but I can't help it. I, I think that Priscilla Cachuera is certainly a good play here. Um, when it comes to the actual metrics, we'll take a look at it. I mean, I don't imagine her inside the distance line is particularly great. I mean, she's plus 230 to win. Um, I mean, she's plus 400. I mean, I guess that's okay. It's not terrible. Um, so I think between the kind of my opinion that the line might be a little bit bad and the fact that in her 20% of her wins, she probably gets there, you know, as, and making the optimal. I think Priscilla Ketchware is a pretty live underdog here. All right. Uh, Matthew Semmelsberger versus Unos Medic. So this fight we have, I think a decent, there are a couple of them where you have a decent a bit of line value here. So you have Matt Semmelsberger who, he opened up, I think, like minus 140, and he completely steamed. He's like minus 200 here. And when you look at the, the DraftKings pricing, he's only 8,600 on the board. Uh, that is that is a pretty big deal. You know, $8,600 fighter really should be more like minus 150 or minus 160. He's minus 200 plus. So you're getting quite a bit of line value here. And in addition to that, this is a fight where you're going you're gonna to expect a lot of action. Okay, all of Matthew Semmelsberger's fights just kind of generate a lot of action. Um, you look at the inside the distance line here, you have Semmelsberger inside the distance at plus 100. I mean, that's the, usually the type of price that you demand of your um, $9,000 fighters, and he's 8,600. Not to mention, he does have a little bit of takedown upside also. I mean, between the high pace in a decision, the inside the distance line, Plus the uh, possible takedown upside. I mean, this is an extremely, extremely strong play here. Um, 
the only case I would make on the Medich side is the fact that, you know, I would imagine Semmelsberger is going to be really high owned as a result of everything that I just said, because Medich has just this terrible line value here. He's being priced as if he should be, you know, only plus 140 or something like that, but he's really plus 200. So Medich is just an extremely poor play. The only thing you can justify is that he is going to be, I imagine, extremely low owned as a result of it. But uh, Semmelsberger is, is so far clearly the best play on the board. All right, moving up, we have uh, CJ Vergara versus Vinicius Salvador. So you have 8,700 versus 7,500. So you're expecting Vergara to be, again, maybe about a minus 170-ish. And let's take a look and see what his odds actually are. He's only like minus 150. Um, this, so I'd say there's a little bit of line value in Salvador. And, you know, and I can see why. This guy Salvador, he's kind of legit. I mean, he 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 lost to Victor Altamirano in a three-round decision. Okay, fair enough. Pick and fight happens. But yeah, it's like KO win, KO, KO. He like wins every fight. And then and then the only fight he lost, he lost to Feel Feelho, who, you know, he just he just came back uh, after a pretty decent decent loss to Mikhaev. He came in and submitted uh uh Barez, who was a popular underdog this past weekend. So I mean this guy uh Salvador is is uh, is, is pretty good. And the line value is 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 definitely there. Uh, let's take a look at the inside the distance lines here. You have Vergara inside the distance plus 165, which is pretty good, right? Not great, 8,700. Salvador inside the distance plus 185, given his price. I mean, this is really, really strong. You know, um, Vergara was getting the beat, the crap beat out of him by Daniel Deserta until DeSerta well, sort of just gassed out and Vergara took over. But this Salvador is kind of no joke. You know, at 7,500, given his inside the distance line and his line value, I think he's an extremely strong play here. So we're right off the bat with with two very strong plays, one, slight, you know, medium-sized favorite and one, you know, relatively decent underdog. Vergara at 8,700, I just don't think that he – his metrics kind of support that line value is just not great. And the inside of distance line is all right, but it's not, it's not anything that stands out. Jake Matthews versus uh, Darius Flowers taking this on short notice. Um, usually with a fight like this, when you have a relatively relative unknown, you're probably better off just kind of relying on the numbers here. So, so you have Jake Matthews at 9,300. What we're expecting is for him to be, you know, about a minus, again, 220 favor or something like that. Maybe a little more. And he's, he's fair enough. He's minus two, 260 or so. He's about the same, a little less than Miranda Maverick, who is priced a little bit higher than him. But again, it might, at 9,400 or 9,300, he needs to have, is it 9,300? 9,300. He needs to have an inside the distance line of minus 110 plus probably a little bit of takedown upside, all right? Or a little bit better than minus 110. Let's take a look and see what we got here. Matthews inside the distance is, um, well, it doesn't actually say. It says him by submission plus 180, by TKO is plus 275. The fight itself inside the distance is minus 300. So I'm I am projecting here that Matthews is is okay. You know, probably a minus one ten or minus one fifteen inside the distance. So I kind of put him in a similar spot to that of Miranda Maverick. Um, maybe a little bit worse because Maverick does have that takedown upside as well. Um, when you look at Jake Matthews, let's see if he's got any real takedown upside. If anything, I think Flowers is the one with the takedown upside here. I mean, you do see Matthews with four takedowns in a fight before. He, you know, he can he can get this done. So I don't think this is the way he's going to do it, though. I think he's going to try to uh, fend off Flowers, who's going to try to get after him in the first round. And Matthews probably not going to take over until the second round, I imagine. So it's kind of like an okay play. I think I think net net, him and Miranda Maverick are both decent, but neither of them are are fighters you have to play. 
Uh, Derek Fla the Derek Flowers, um, is Derek or Darius? Darius Flowers is kind of interesting because based on everything I'm hearing, I mean, he is aggressive. And he's he can hit hard and he's got wrestling also. Um, he's going to go after this. And and let's take a look and see what his inside the distance line is, just for the hell of it. You have, it's not exactly here yet, but you have Flowers by TKO plus 350. And that's not that bad, you know? So I think Flowers is, is, is certainly in play a little bit here. So I, I think that both these fighters are in play. I don't think either of them are huge priorities, honestly. But Flowers at that price, I think he, I think he's it's worth it at under 7K. All right, Roman Kopula versus Claudia Riviero. So you have Roman Kopula, who is a, you know, he's he's definitely a pure striker. I've heard that he has wrestling from like a long time ago, but there's literally no reason for him to be using it right now. He's been doing so well on the feet that he's just going to try to do the same thing. And Ribeiro is definitely aggressive. Um, he got a second round TKO of, of Joseph Holmes in his last fight, and Joseph Holmes is terrible. So I don't mean too much about that. So let's 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 just get right to the numbers here. Uh, first of all, Kopula minus 200. So we're expecting about a 9,100 or something like that on DraftKings. And it's 9K, which is fine. So what you need if you want to play something with somebody like Kopulov is, again, inside the distance line, about minus 110. Uh, in the absence of that, you're going to want a little bit of uh, of takedown upside. And when you look at this, you have Kopulov, who is, it looks like exactly minus 110 inside the distance. So he's fine. You know what I mean? He's not through the roof amazing, but he's fine. He's plus 300 in round one. That's just, that's not great. You know, his style is, is really just kind of just pick the guy apart and then get the KO later. He's not really that, that psycho that's going to go out and try to destroy you in the first round. Um, so uh, I think, again, I think he's fine. I, I don't think it's, it's, it's a lock or anything like that. I think given his price, I guess you have to consider him is he a little better than Jake Matthews? Now they're they're pretty much I think the same because I think Jake Matthews might have a little bit more takedown upside. He's a little bit better uh as far as his win odds go. So I'm gonna put Coppola right alongside of Matthews and, and Maverick as, as good good spend ups, but not literally not spend ups that you just have to have. And then on the other side, you have Ribeiro and his inside the distance line. Um, let's see. Ribeiro inside the distance plus 250. I mean, that's uh, that's very reasonable. Okay. So at 7,200, Ribeiro is definitely uh, a, a decent underdog with respect to the metrics. So we'll have to put him in there just as kind of a, a possible underdog. Uh, all right. Let's move on to. Uh, Marcos Ruggiero de Lima versus Derek Lewis, heavyweight fight. And here we have another really strong piece of line value. You have Ruggiero de Lima, who's 8,500, and Derek Lewis is 7,700. That's usually about, you know, uh, reflecting like a minus 150. But because line value, because of a line movement that came piling in on, um, because of action that came piling in on de, on de Lima, he is now a minus 200. This is exactly the kind of the same situation as Matthew Semmelsberger. So this is extremely strong, you know, not to mention you look at the inside the distance lines here. You have Ruggiero inside the distance at minus 125 at 8,600. I mean, this is just like an elite play. So you have, so you have, I think it's very, very similar to Semmelsberger. Um, they have similar inside the distance lines. The lean is a little bit better, but Semmelsberger is probably does better in a decision, a little bit more active. But the lean has got takedowns as well as the Semmelsberger. I think they're very similar plays, honestly. Derek Lewis, I think, is going to be popular because people just like playing him. I guess the best it's the best I can describe it. Um, but the line value is just really, really poor. Now, his inside the distance line is, is pretty reasonable, though. You look at his inside the distance line, you have He's plus, what did I say, plus 200? 
Derek Lewis inside the distance is plus 200. Uh, and that at 7,700, I mean, you have to respect that. So, you know what? Even though he has poor line value, Derek Lewis just has to be considered a live underdog. So, uh, for DFS purposes. So, we're already giving you like three, or actually four, you know. So, so if you believe the Cachuera play, which now I really don't even think you have to play. Okay. But Cachuera, decent underdog. Flowers, decent underdog. Ribeiro, Salvador's, you know, even Derek Lewis. So you have some very legitimate underdogs here. Um, all right, uh, moving on. We have uh, Trevin Giles versus Gabrielle Bonfim. All right, so this one is probably the, I don't want to say the lock, but this is the one that's going to stand out. So you take a look and you have, he's minus 300 favorite. He's being priced accordingly, right? He's 90, actually 9,200. 9,200 is more like, you know, minus 230 or so. I mean, his line value, he actually has a little bit of line value here with his price. Um, and then when you look at his inside the distance prop, Bonfim, um, Bonfim inside the distance is minus 190. So that's just makes him significantly the best play of all of these, you know, all of those spend ups. So it really is. And I don't know if there any more we'll get to. Um, no, I guess not. So of all, well, there actually is one more. So given of all the spenders we talked about so far, I mean, Bon Fim is just light years of best over, you know, uh, uh, Maverick over um, whatever else I said, Matthews, um, Kopulov. I mean, you, you got, you're supposed to find the extra, you know, not even find him. He's cheaper than, than a couple of these guys. I mean, this is, this is, this is the closest thing to lock you're going to get. Uh, Giles, again, just, just at 7K, he doesn't have a good inside the distance prop either. Um, the only thing I would say about Giles, if he does win, um, you're going to probably get a pretty popular Gabriel Bonfim. So you get some leverage, but he's plus 250. You know, I, I, I'd i rather rather play Cachuero's even better win odds at a cheaper price. So uh, I, I don't like the Trevin Giles side, but Bonfim is probably the best spender. All right, so now we have um, – there are a couple of fights here that are kind of style-based fights, and this is one of them. So you have Kevin Holland versus Michael Chiesa. Um, you, first of all, you look at the win odds here. You have Holland at minus 140, so you're expecting, I don't know, 8,500, 7,700, maybe a little bit tighter than that. Let's take a look. You have, um, yeah, 84 to 78, perfectly reasonable. No, 8,400, you don't really need to have that big of an inside the distance prop. Uh, probably probably only needs about plus 200, maybe even not even. So let's take a look at this. So Kevin Holland's fight, Holland inside the distance is like plus 100. This is very, very strong. Um, now, on the other hand, Chiesa doesn't have a strong inside the distance line, although plus 275 is not the end of the world. His, his, his path to victory is very DraftKings friendly. You know, it, it's he's he is the way that he's going to win this fight, apparently, is by getting a bunch of takedowns. And when you get a bunch of takedowns and you win, you usually tend to score very well. Um, so this is a fight that you probably want to target both sides. But, you know, the Holland side, I mean, don't sleep on this, you know, because Chase of being what I think is going to be a popular underdog because of his path to victory, being so DraftKings friendly, when you get Holland with a very, you know, very reasonable inside the distance prop here. Um, I think that Holland is very, very live. Um, so I think both sides of this are good. Um, I think Holland is, is he getting a lower own? It might be, but I definitely think both, both these guys are in play. All right, moving on. We have uh, Stephen Thompson versus Michelle Perpeheya. Uh, it's an 8K, 8K fight, uh, pretty much. Actually, that's not true. This one, Stephen Thompson's 8,800 to 7,400. And uh, I'll save you the time. I mean, Stephen Thompson is a complete fade here because at 8,800, he's going to need an inside the distance line of about a minus one, plus 120 at least at the best or at worst. And his inside the distance line is extremely poor. I and mean, it's like plus, 
300, and he has no takedown upside. So I'm going to probably full fade Stephen Thompson here. Um, Michel Pejea, this is another one like Chiesa, you think that his path to victory, even though look, he doesn't have a good inside the distance line, right? Let's look at Pejea inside the distance. Um, plus 320 or something like that. Um, I mean, you look at this, first of all, his inside the distance line is better than Thompson. But plus three, plus 320 is actually not bad. Um, but in addition to that, he has some takedown upside. You know, uh, Stephen Thompson gives up takedowns to whoever shoots for them. So I think that uh, Pahea is very, very live here. Another good underdog. And, and I think Thompson is, is again, he's probably the closest thing I have to a complete full field. So we're now at the two main events here, pretty much. Uh, you, well, I mean, you know, first of all, Jan Blahovich versus Alex Pahea. Um this is a this is an 8k 8k fight, I think, or close enough. You have Pahaya, yeah, eight pay 8k and Blahovich 8200. Um before we get into the styles, let, let's just go to the numbers first. So again, at 8k, you're gonna want probably plus 200 inside the distance. And let's see what you have. You have Pahaya inside the distance plus 155. Obviously, it's pretty good. And then you have Blahovich inside the distance, which is pretty, well, I want to say poor, but plus 200. That's actually not bad. But if you factor in the fact that that he is he is very likely to be going for takedowns and control time, uh, I think that Blahovich is probably the better play of the two. Um, the thing about Pahaya, again, is that if he gets that second round KO, for example, what does that get a 90? Is that good enough? I mean, it, it might be. So yeah, I, I do like both sides of this. And this is like this is like kind of funny. Like last week you had 15 fights and I was able to, to fade like eight fights like immediately. Here it's kind of difficult. I mean, I like I like a lot of fighters here. So um we'll just have to see how to get different. Dustin Poirier against Justin Gaethje. Uh so I mean, what do you want? It's five rounds, 8,300, 7,900. Going to be high owned, and I don't think the inside the distance line is anything to write home about for anybody here. You have, I don't know. You have, first of all, the fight ends inside the distance. Is actually, pretty good. Minus two thirty. Let's look at these. Koi inside the distance plus one fifty, which is really good, given the fact that he's got five rounds to work with. If it doesn't go inside the distance, Gaethje inside the distance plus 200, so that's a little worse. Gaethje, despite of having a wrestling background, that doesn't really go for takedowns. So I think that Poirier is the play here. Uh, I think that if anybody, I think I might fade uh, Gaethje. That that could be uh, because inside the distance is not the greatest and his no takedown upside. I mean, it's inside of this is fine. But if he wins and it's a decision, what does it look like? 90? I mean, at that price, it could be okay. But uh, I prefer some of the other underdogs. So, boy, oh, boy. I mean, what do we do, right? So so you have last, last car, we had 15 fights, 30 fighters to choose from, and I liked seven. <laughs> Here, we only have 22 fighters to choose from, and it seems like I like 15. So let's... Let's let's just recap and let's just we'll, we'll just do this again from the bottom up. So I think in in thinking about it, I probably you probably don't need to play catchware. Okay, it's a good flyer to have, and if you're playing one fifty, yeah, but I don't think you have to prioritize her, and I don't think you have to prioritize Maverick either. Okay, this one Semmelsberger is extremely strong, Salvador extremely strong. I mean, Matthews, Flowers, it feels like the Miranda Cachuera fight. I think you could play either of these two, but they're not huge priorities. Uh, Kopulov, Ribeiro. I don't think you need to play Kopulov. I think Ribeiro is kind of is fine. But then you have both sides of this fight. I mean, Delima and Derek Lewis, extremely powerful fight from a DFS perspective. And then the Bonfim play, that's the one you're going to want to get. And then, yeah, Kiesa Holland... 
take a shot with one of those. Oh, I forgot one. My bad. I apologize. We'll get we'll get back to Bobby Green and Troy and and Tony Ferguson in a second. I do apologize. Stephen Thompson, Mikel uh, Pejia. Um, Pejia would be the one side I would take. I wouldn't play any Stephen Thompson. You could play either the Blakovich fight and probably no Gaethje. So if you have all these middling guys to choose from, maybe maybe you don't dip down to these to these larger underdogs. All right, so let's deal with the Bobby Green fight because it's funny. He's the, the highest priced guy on the card. So I don't know why I didn't look look for him. So Bobby Green at what is he, 9,500? So to be a good $9,500 fighter, he's got to either, well, not either. He's got to have a combination of a minus 120 inside the distance plus takedown upside, or he's got to really be almost favored to win in the first round. And you have Bobby Green, who's a pure striker here. So his viability is going to be completely dependent on when he gets his KO, if in fact he gets his KO. So if we look at it, you have inside the distance in general of, you know, he's uh, minus 160, which is which is obviously pretty good. Well, wait a minute. Inside the distance, plus 140? I mean... This one you have to lay minus one eighty eight, I guess. This is terrible. You can't play this. So yeah, so Green's a fade. Ferguson, his win odds are just, I think, too poor. You can't play him. Um, is that true? Let's take a look. Yeah, he's plus three hundred. You you don't need to play him. I mean, if he wins, how's he gonna win? Maybe he gets a submission. We'll, we'll do that in the betting break. Um, okay. Um, so, again, uh, so there's another one. So, we're going to fade the Bobby Green. We're going to go under on these other 9Ks with the exception of Von Feem. And we can play middling with these other guys. Um, I guess that'll do it. Uh, we're going to do a betting breakdown uh, hopefully tomorrow. If not, well, actually, probably we'll wait till Friday, but we'll see. And uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.